So a really good evening to everybody watching this, um, this live recording, or those of you that then watch afterwards um, on YouTube, welcome. Um, or should I say, welcome mighty companions and teachers for God. So this week we continue with chapter text, text chapter five. Um, just uh, highlight as we go along, and the whole the theme of of chapter five is healing and wholeness, which is the same thing actually. Wholeness is healing, and healing is wholeness. We we reached. Uh, chapter 5.4 last week and so we continue on chapter 5.5 teaching and healing which again no different to healing and wholeness teaching and healing is actually teaching is the process whereby the teacher for god heals uh, because we're all learner teacher and again i remind all of us that this is Holy Spirit presenting itself as Jesus Christ by to those who are still in the objectification of a Jesus as a person and at a real, later realization and later higher level awakening, right-minded perception, you realize Jesus has dissolved and become Christ's mind and Christ's mind is the awakened part of the dreamer's mind, your mind infused, filled with the memory of God, memory for God, voice for God, Holy Spirit. And it's, and it's addressing, so it's the Holy Spirit, the memory of God through the voice of God in your mind, in your own mind is addressing you and saying, you decision maker, you son of God that have fallen asleep, had the secret dream, the dream of the spirit world, now projected into this physicality, forgotten, but on purposely forgotten, the details of the secret dream and all the previous incarnations you've had. Because if you remember that, it would be so much easier to defeat the ego. And saying to you, choose again, it's talking to you as the viewer, the observer, the higher self, and saying, choose again, choose to give the authority, the authorship, the guiding, the guidance of your mind to the Holy Spirit, as opposed to what you've done and, and what you've made, which is, your own idea of what you are and that idea is where fear filtered in and becomes solidified in its identity and that identity is called the ego so it's asking you to choose again and it starts this line so beautifully by saying what fear is hidden is still part of you now you've all heard this in the spiritual circles we do you know Jung started it Freud definitely advanced a lot of it Nietzsche did a lot of it, and so many other psychotherapists ever since talk of the shadow self. What is the shadow self? It's suppressed, hidden guilt in our subconscious mind. It's the denial, fear, guilt, sin, suppressed. And, and, and we, of course, objectified in terms of our own qualities, things we dislike about ourselves, things we don't want to see the world to see, especially when we start labeling ourselves spiritual, because spiritual people want to speak spiritual language you know, it's blessings and holy brother and holy this and holy that and we have this whole thing which just scares the shit out of everybody that even remotely looks for an alternative way or a different way or starts to come into course of miracles when they start hearing spiritual people speak and with this holy language and you can't swear and you can't say this and you can't say that you mustn't curse fuck off really just be human, okay? And you're not human, but you're in it now. You're in the dream. So let's just go through it without trying to be spiritual. Because the minute you try, ego says, I'll appropriate all your wonderful spiritual language. It's now your shadow self or your inner child. It's not inner child there. Eh? It's you. Inner child is your innocence. Just call it what it is. Inner child. What inner, I need to do inner child work. What the hell are you talking about? And so you left your child in your childhood. It's just you. And, and, and many adults, they don't grow up. They don't, not growing up is not taking responsibility. Growing up doesn't mean that you're serious. Serious is just another ego. And, and inner child is just the innocent self. And the innocent self is wounded how? It's you. You're wounded. You've, you've denied your innocence. You've denied your 
childlike innocence quality. Give it labels and make it into another persona living inside you. There's already enough characters in our, in our mind. We've already got so many personas that when solidified become multiple personality disorders. What fear is hidden is still part of you. Can you see your hands? You can, fear. Physical body, fear. The denial of truth, which is no body, no, no physicality. This dies. Anything that dies isn't real. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. So let's admit it. Whatever disturbs us, whatever we're afraid of is within us, hidden within us. And it'll come up as our reaction. Something happens and we react violent, aggressive, or we, you know, we're either the, the aggressor and the bully or the conqueror, or we're the victim. And if so, if, it, if we're in victim mode and something happens, we go into woe is me and the world is so terrible. The world's coming to an end. The world's not coming to an end, not in our lifetime, not for the next 3,000 lifetimes, okay? The world's still expanding. Universe is still expanding, which means the dreamer is still replicating. As we get into the heydays of our lives, we start, oh, um, life's coming to an end. So we then immediately believe the world's coming to an end. People have been predicting the world's coming to an end for as long as people have written, written word. In Kuni form, there was already predictions of the end of the world. We're so far from end of this world, end of reincarnation, we're in, in, what's in, in the illusion of space-time, we're still 16 billion years away from it. Okay, so, and this planet's still got another 40 billion years of life. And our solar system still has another 150 billion years of life. So don't you worry about time. You want to transcend belief, your belief in time, which brings you into the awakened mind. So this fractured self, which is a body, once it awakens, it won't incarnate again as another body because the spirit, the thought in form that projected this body gets absorbed into the Christ mind, adding another lamp, another anointment to the Christ mind, expanding the Christ mind. Whereas the you that was this body and all the bodies you've been in all your past dream incarnations, gone. Will you have a memory of ever having existed? No. Why? Because when you're awake, you're awake. Can you remember a dream you had two years ago? No. Yes, perhaps the lucid dreams, but in the lucid dreams, your self is awake and it's bringing you messages. Lucid dreams are very clear messengers. Why can't you see the body when lucid dreaming? Because the body isn't real to that which is awake. Why can't you see spirit when you're dreaming? Because in the wrong mind dreaming, you can't see spirit. So realize this, as long as you're still in physical form and unless you become a Ramana Maharashi, okay, or Neem Karoli Baba, and I sent you guys the videos last week, um, who have now become saints. In other words, they've let go of all bodily perception and they're just identifying with Christ's mind like Jesus did. At that state, you'll, you'll see many of these teachers, they spoke so little. And... Um, as a teacher for God, we may be speaking, but that's because I learn through teaching, which this course explains to you as well. So am I awake, enlightened? Far from it. The reason I share, the reason I teach, the reason I write, it's because this is my power to full remembrance of my capital S self, the Holy Son of God. I'm remembering I'm the Son of God through sharing this, because by sharing it, I can only share what I know and have. And by sharing it, I grow. And it, and it grows in me. So know this. While we're here in body mind, we're far from here. Okay? And, it's still, and, the, and the fear is still part of us. Joining the atonement, the at one is a way out of fear. The Holy Spirit will help you reinterpret everything that you perceive as fearful. Pain, suffering, anguish, trauma the view of the world, the fear of the world, and teach you only what is loving is true, because what is loving is God. Truth is beyond your ability to destroy. Of course, the ego stride that forever, but entirely within your ability to accept it. What does that mean? The fact that you believe you're here and there's a world and this is wrong and that is wrong and this is good and that's bad means you've believed it. You've accepted 
the ego's version of reality and what we call this world, the real world, is a version of reality that is untrue. The real world, the true world, is the kingdom of heaven, and that is not physical. That is the eternal essence of God. It belongs to you. Okay, so it belongs to you because, and you've heard me say this a hundred times, and here it is for the first time in our readings, as an extension of God. So remember this about yourself. You, a son of God, is actually, imagine God as pure energy or pure light energy expanding eternally. That light energy is the sonship and therefore the extension. So you, the son of God, dreaming, is still extending as God extends. And the truth of you is you're still extending. And hence, because you're unaware that you're still extending, you're dreaming extension too. And the dreaming of your extension is the extending. The universe is still growing. Something like, uh, I saw it the other day and I've forgotten the exact numbers, but 1,700 um, 1, and something meters per second. You know, the universe is still extending. Why? Because if the Son of God is uh, an extension of God, the Son is extending too. So extension within extension. And true extension is true creation. And true creation is love. But while we dream, we're unaware. Mm -hmm. But what are we? We're love. So what have we manifested? A misperception of ourself. So everything you see is, is yourself misperceived, just seen incorrectly. So because you're in God and God is still extending, you're extending. But you've labeled outside yourself what you think is outside yourself, the universe, the place of body minds, because you are an extension of God. And so you created it with him. That should be a capital H. But I have explained that this old uh, PDF document, uh, which is a couple of centuries old, is, uh, has got some errors in it in terms of capitalization. It, belong, it is yours because it is part of you, just as you are part of God because he created you. So for those people that say, I am God, here it is. You're not God. You never will be God, but you're a part of God. Okay, So you're the extension of it. And those people that say, but this universe is God expressing himself? No, absolutely not. I know that Advita promotes it. I know that the Upanishads promote it. I know that some Sufism promotes it, but absolutely not. In Course in Miracles, we realize God has no need to experience himself through the experience of what he's not. God has no need to self-realize because God is the eternal perfect. What's happened is a cell within God, a son of God, has fallen asleep in his dream of the universe mm -hmm. and is experiencing himself through his dream. And his dream is the universe. He's made the universe. Now, when given back to the Holy Spirit, this making, not creation, because true creation is extending. So we've made the universe. When given back to the Holy Spirit, it gets reinterpreted as love. And love is your creation. So you start to realize it's all you and you're still extending. And what happens, you now want to share and extend the love you are, which means serving your, your fallen asleep fractures. You want to awaken, like when you've got a sore leg, you want to heal your leg. Your leg's a part of you. The, sun, the, the world, the universe is a part of you. You want to heal it. How do you heal it? By extending the love you are, giving it the love medicine, for example. So nothing that is good can be lost. So the essence of you, the purity of you can never be lost or forgotten. So nothing that is, that is good can be lost because it comes from the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, you, okay, the voice for creation, the memory of God, the Holy Spirit, the voice for creation. Nothing that is not good was ever created and therefore cannot be protected. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. So nothing, you can't protect anything. You, that's why things fade, rust, and eventually dissolve to, to you know, from dust to dust. The body dies, gets buried, cremated. The atonement, the atonement, the joining, the remembering. Atonement, think of atonement as joining. And as you join with the sonship, you remember what you are. Is the guarantee of the safety. Why? Because then you know you've never left. You wake up of, you know, out of a dream of fear. No more fear. It's safe. You only believe you unsafe or can be unsafe while you're dreaming a dream that can never be. 
and the union of the sonship is its protection. Why? Because you wake up in the realization, it was all me. Every character, every planet, every animal, every tree, every forest, every molecule of water, aliens included, okay, um, is all me. Uranus retrograde or Mercury retrograde, whatever retrograding this month, it's all me. It's not affecting me. I'm affecting it. My thoughts affect it, not it affects me. Why? It's all happening in my dream. And you have to, have to is a strong word, but I urge it. You have to, if you want to awaken, take full responsibility for having dreamt up the entire nightmare and everything that's wrong with it. Now give it back to the Holy Spirit and it becomes reinterpreted for you. You can't reinterpret it. Okay? The Holy Spirit reinterprets it for you because he takes authority of your mind, takes guardianship of your mind. And your mind moves into guardianship of your mind under the Holy Spirit. Imagine a room is dark, no light in it, guardianship, ego, fear. Your light switches on, that mind gets, becomes right mind, lit mind, enlightened mind, wakened mind, guardianship, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, the light that makes you realize, that reminds you of what you are in truth, the memory of God. The ego cannot prevail against the kingdom because the sonship is united. It doesn't exist, actually. In the presence of those who hear the Holy Spirit's call to be as one, the ego fades away and is undone. So in the presence of those who hear the Holy Spirit to, to, be, to be as one, the ego fades away and is undone. And how does that happen? Okay, that happens when you go still and realize I am. Be still and know I am God. I am is the essence of God. What the ego makes, and very different to create, so what we call the creation is the making. But of course, having forgotten that we have dreamt this up because of the secret dream, and we can't believe that we're the son of God. And just imagine, if you were the son of God, you have the power to create universes, as Jesus Kelly stated. As the ego, or Satan in the desert, said to, to tempt Jesus, said, but you're the son of God. You can just call down the angels and change all of this. Because you have the power of God, because your essence is the same essence of God to create. But when you're asleep, think about it. When you're awake, you, you extend the self. You look into the world, you share of yourself. When you're asleep, you're in, in a dream state. No matter what happens in the dream state, there's no creation. It's just imagination. Imagination is not creation. The ego makes it, keeps itself. And it is so it is without strength because it's not real. And so it needs to be reinforced in order to stay strong, hence the sharing of ideas. Hence the ego tries to convince people that it's spiritual or special or unique or whatever. Its existence is unshared. Okay? So what the ego makes, it keeps to itself. So is without strength. Its existence is unshared. This is a beautiful line. Remember this. It does not die. Oh, the ego doesn't die. It was never born. So if it wasn't born, can't die. Okay. So physical birth, we call babies born, is not a beginning. It's a continuing. It's like we learn in science. Energy can't be destroyed. It just goes from form to the formless, back to the form and so forth. Everything that continues has already been born. Where is it born? The Son of God is born in God's mind, the extension of his, God, of his mind. So what are we? Are we actually born? No, we're dreamt up. Born we already are. Begotten, not made. The Holy Son of God, isn't it? John verse 16. The Son of God, begotten, not made. You are begotten, thought up. Your thought in God's mind can never be removed from the mind that thought you up. But while you're dreaming, you're thinking up all sorts of stuff, but it's untrue. And so you will grow, and, 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 and as you remember, this will strengthen in you. It will increase as you are willing to return the unhealed part of your mind to the higher part, the higher part, the Holy Spirit part, higher mind, higher self, capital S self, Holy Spirit self, Christ mind, returning it undivided to creation. As you awake up, you keep extending. I have come to give you the foundation so your own thoughts can make you really free. So reinterpret it, and then you keep extending the real thoughts that you're having with the memory of God. So you're now remembering, so you're no longer imagining what cannot be. 
and this is such a powerful word because this is why we struggle. You have carried the burden of unshared ideas that are too weak to increase. Because if you could share your idea, let's say you're struggling pain, you're you're feeling pain, and I believed in your pain, I'd make it real for me, and I'd be in pain too. Whereas when we're when we share love, we all experience love simultaneously. The holy instant many of us have experienced when we're doing group work. So unshared ideas are too weak to increase, but having made them, made them, okay, you did not realize how to undo them. Of course, you created the maze of the mind, you know, like the old Greek mythologies and there's the beast in the middle of the maze and, and whoever it is with his little string and making sure he, he's going to find his path back home. Why? It's his maze. It's the maze in his mind. He wants to remember how to get out of it. Uh, the minute you get in the maze and the beast attacks, the string gets broken, the memory gets broken, you can't remember, you've created the maze, you've created the beast, it's all you. You cannot cancel out your past errors alone. Don't try. And why do people fail, and spiritual people especially, because they want to do magic and they, they think they can do it on their own because they're special, they've got power. Mm-hmm. And you don't have power as the body-mind you think you are. The power for you is the holy self, the holy son of God self. But while you can't remember that self, you have no power because only the self has power because it's the son of God. So they will not disappear from your mind without the atonement, a remedy not of your making. So the atonement given to us by the Holy Spirit. It's, and what's the atonement? It's the process of forgiveness until you realize there's nothing to forgive. The joining of the sonship and the remembering that it is the son of God at one One mind. Atonement is one mind. The atonement must be understood as an act of pure sharing or pure act of sharing. That is what I meant to say, that even in this world, it's possible to listen to one voice, the voice for God. And this is what we're doing. At the moment, we're still stuck in two voices. And When you're praying, meditating, doing coursework and community work, it's all one voice, the voice of the Holy Spirit. And the minute you're back into the world, the real world, as people like to call it, which is the illusionary world, you're listening to the voice for ego, and this one's wrong, and that one's wrong, and this one's an arsehole, and that one's a just be. And so we get trapped into this identity, and we attack, and we guilty, and we suppress our guilt, and we hide our shadow. Listen to one voice, the, the mind lights up, becomes lit in the self-awareness, and you remember, you connect, you reconnect with that essence of your essential self, which is the same essence as the essence that made you, God. And so when you reconnect with the essential self, the essence of the self, the essential self, the true self, the son remembers himself as an extension of God. If you are part of the sonship, and the sonship is one which it is, you cannot be limited to the self the ego sees, the body mind. The the self the the ego sees is the body mind. Every loving thought held in any part of the sonship belongs to every part of the sonship. Why? Because it's in one mind, one dreaming mind. So if you awaken, you become a light in a darkened room. If I awaken, I'm another light. And if someone else awakens in another light, if 100 people awaken in this darkened room of the fallen asleep dreaming mind, ego, every time one of us awakens, it brings light to room. So imagine a big concert all in pitch darkness and everyone's holding a candle. All it takes is one person to light their candle and that'll light up the 20 people around him. And now everybody shares the light and they lit and eventually 20 become 100 and 100 become 500 and 500 become a stadium of 2,000 people and the entire stadium is now lit with each individual mind and therefore one lit son of God mind. It is shared because it is loving. Sharing is God's way of creating. In other words, sharing is God creating. And also yours because you are that which is extended and created. The ego can keep you in the exile from the kingdom, but the kingdom, but in the kingdom itself, it has no power. And how does the ego keep you in exile? It keeps you forgetting that you are there. Ideas of the spirit, and this should be a capital S spirit, as in Holy Spirit, or the ideas of God, God is a spirit, do not leave the mind that thinks them nor can they conflict with each other. Why? Because it's one thought, love, eternally, one sonship. However, the ideas of the ego, 
can create conflict because they occur at different levels and also include opposite thoughts at the, at the same level. So what are we talking about levels? Levels are in the mind, in the fallen asleep mind, degrees of levels. You meet people, some are more awakened, some are less awakened, some are awakening, some are completely asleep, some are religious, some are spiritual, some are this, some of that, different levels of conscious awareness. And so if you're fully awake and you go, I am, someone completely asleep says, you are what? They don't realize what you're meaning by I am. And now something as simple and truthful as I am to the fallen asleep leveled mind becomes a debate. I am what? Often people say, especially those that study, the professionals we call them, oh, hello, I am a doctor. Oh, hello, I am an architect. Oh, hello, I'm a policeman. No, you're not. You're not a doctor. You're not a policeman. You're not, you know, you're not an architect. What's the difference between an architect and God? God doesn't think he's an architect, and you're not that. You practice architecture as an expression of yourself, but what are you? You're the son of God, dreaming you're a man or a woman, believing that you're an architect or a doctor. No, you're not. Your profession isn't what you are. What you are cannot be defined in truth by what you do or what you don't do, because the essence of you isn't anything but the essence of you eternally. And that is unconditional acceptance of what is, which equals love. It is impossible to share opposing thoughts. And that's why I'd be very careful, Teachers for God, Course in Miracles community, that you don't start arguing. The minute you start arguing a single concept, if you disagree with what I'm saying and you argue back into the ear, listen with no judgment, it works for you, fantastic. If it lights you up, fantastic. Motivates you, fantastic. Or if it says to you, no, I have a different thought, fantastic. But the minute you judge it and get it into argument, it's not going to happen. This is why my teachings, this isn't a discussion workbook so everybody can now get involved and tell this. There's no storytelling here. Not in my forum. Why? Because this is the way I realize. I learn. I learn my teaching. I offer it for free. Watch, don't watch. I am no need for comment. I'm not going to get into debate. I'm certainly not getting into argument. I'm sharing my understanding of myself, my memory of God's self. And so use it. Works for you. Fantastic. If it doesn't resonate with you, at least you're realizing what you are, your understanding through the experience of what you don't want. Bless it. Move forward. The minute you get into argument, Course in Miracles students, teachers for God, you're back into the ego. Ego has captured you. Ego has appropriated your so-called spiritual special teaching. And now it's ego voice sounding like it's the Holy Spirit or the voice for God or the course in miracles. And that is certainly, then you've, then you've turned this into nothing more than another dogmatic religion, which is not the purpose of a course in miracles. And I say this, if you're charging money to teach the course, you're fallen because this is not for, this is not to be made money from. This is to be shared and sharing openly and equally. If you're doing modalities and you're using the course, and by all means, if this is your profession to be a psychotherapist or a coach, whatever you may be, and you're using that if you if you're charging money to teach a course in miracles, you're in your ego, whether you agree with me or not, you are. You can share only the thoughts that are of God. And what is that? Love. Love, acceptance, that he keeps for you, capital H, he keeps for you. Where? In his kingdom as you. God keeps the thoughts of the kingdom in you because you are the kingdom. And the kingdom is God. And of such is the kingdom of heaven. You are the kingdom of heaven. The rest remains with you until the Holy Spirit, so the rest of what is true, has interpre reinterpreted them in the light of the kingdom, in the memory of what is true. The Holy Spirit reinterprets them for you. So that's why before you start praying, teaching, talking, you invite Holy Spirit into your awareness and you give them the authority of your right mind, making them too worthy of being shared. So in the light of the kingdom, everything is shared equally amongst all, why? Because it's the lamps that get lit in the mind. And as you dissolve the darkness, which is you, body, mind, 
What happens? What remains behind the lit you, the holy self you, the holy spirit you, the Christ you remains and you join. If you become Christ, what do you do? You join with Christ. How many Christs are there? One Christ. How many sons of God are there? One son of God. Appearance of millions, billions, and trillions of dreamers, one son of God. When they have been sufficiently purified, all your thoughts, all your ideas, he lets you give them away. What does he do? He brings the students. When you're ready to share them, he brings you the students that are ready to vibrate and, and resonate with the way you teach. And of course, the deeper you dial in, the smaller your group. The deeper you dial in, so the more you commercialize it and talk about angels, law of attraction, how to manifest your dreams, how to manifest wealth and abundance, more come. Why? Because we want to be conscious, spiritual, but we want to make money in the world of illusion. I tell you this, you can be abundant and live in this illusion abundantly, financially, spiritually, physically, emotionally, in terms of health, in every other aspect. It's simple. Why? Because love money or whatever it is vibrational frequency is an extension of you money is an extension of love but you don't love money money is love made manifest when you express you in your most natural way when you love what you do love what you are your inherent passionate nature and you extend it and share it to the world the the, the reciprocation thereof comes in the forms of people Places, things, events, money. Money is love. Rupert Sparrow has a great talk on money as an extension of love. So when they've been sufficiently purified, he lets you give them away, share with them. And the decision to share them is their purification. As we teach, we remember. The more we share, the more we remember. The more we remember, the more we share. Share what? Share the truth. Share the unconditional love of God. The acceptance of one another, the total acceptance of what is of one another is the atonement because acceptance means we have forgiven and to forgive. And there was a question this week, you know, I forgive, but I haven't forgot. Well, if you haven't forgot, you're an ego because to forgive is to forget. Think about when you were five years old and someone hurt you and you forgave them. Can you still remember it? No, why not? Because it's forgiven. If you forgive but haven't forgotten, if you're still holding a grudge or still weary, you haven't fully forgiven. Because when you're fully forgiven, there's no more weariness, full trust again. It may not resonate and they may not come back into your life. You may not want to have them in your life because you no longer want what you don't want. Because you'll, gentle, you'll just keep moving along your path and, and what appears as others will fade away. But if you haven't forgotten, if it still triggers your emotion. Someone, you see their face and you still get angry. You have a thought of them and get angry. Someone mentions them in a, in a party or someone you're talking and someone mentions them or you're driving past and you see them on a billboard and it triggers that emotion. You haven't forgiven them. It triggers you emotionally. It's not your spiritual intuitions telling you to avoid toxic people. There's no such thing as toxic people. If you see toxic people, it's your toxicity being projected into the world. If you see what appears to be toxicity, it means I need to heal here first. Because once this is healed, you won't see toxicity. The reason you're seeing it is because that's not healed. You can only see what you are. Don't think you're special. Don't start to make yourself spiritually superior. Toxicity out there in the world means toxicity here. You're drawn to what you are. That's why you'll switch on the television and toxic people appear or war appears. Because there's a war or toxicity within you. And if you haven't admitted that, you haven't taken responsibility for having dreamt up this entire disaster called the dream of separation, this tiny man idea where the Son of God forgot not to laugh. And this is Jesus speaking directly of us. This is the memory of Jesus. Remember, don't objectify. Jesus is no longer in form. There's no more Jesus. Jesus is now Christ, the anointed awake mind. But as a representation of God, symbolically, that's all Jesus is now, a symbol for the atonement. Now, the symbol now is communicating with us so that we can understand symbolically what is life truly representing. I heard one voice because I understood that I could not atone for myself. Jesus wasn't special. Didn't do it on his own. Why? He had help. Who was the help? Holy Spirit. The same helper as us. 
Symbolically, Jesus is helping us, but Jesus has become Christ. Christ is the anointed mind, the awakened mind, the Holy Spirit mind. Who is actually helping us? Holy Spirit. Whenever you see an angel, spirit God, whatever you call them, what's actually helping you? What is a spirit God? What is an angel? It's projections, filtered projections of purity of Holy Spirit. Right mind. Filtered through what you perceive to be Holy Spirit, because you can't conceive Holy Spirit until you realize the non-duality of it. The fact that it's you awake. So then it appears as spirit guides or angels or past loved ones, ancestors, and we label it all sorts of stuff. And the minute you label it, it's gone. It's either Mary or Joseph or the saints. It's all you. The awake part of you calling through you to remember what you are. Listening to one voice, Holy Spirit, your own voice, awake voice, implies the decision to share it in order to hear it yourself. So people say, oh, I want to hear the voice of God. I want to hear the Holy Spirit. Share you. Sit in the quiet room. You'll hear it, but it'll be faint and soft. When you start to share it, as this course is calling us, you don't have to be on a platform. You don't have to be on a street corner with a Bible in your hand or the course in your hand and shouting it from the rooftops. Everyone you meet on the elevator, in the street, at the school, at work, share you by example. First and foremost. Don't preach. Don't get into arguments. The Bible's wrong. This is wrong. We know the Bible's wrong. We don't have to argue. It's written from a dualistic brain mind at the time. Reinterpret the Bible with right-mindedness. Beautiful book. Reading the Bible from a place of fear, all of it's fearful. And of course, that's why fear of God in the Bible. But don't go and preach. I'm doing it right now. Teach us for God. This is, this is the the platform where we commune and start to unravel all the nonsense, all the hidden deceit where the ego has appropriated truth and twisted it. The mind, capital M mind, please take note. Christ mind, awake mind, God mind. The mind that was in me is still irresistibly drawn to every mind. Small m means the dreamer's fractured minds. There aren't actually little minds, but while we appear in the dream, small minds created by God, because God has actually created the sonship, one dreaming mind who's now thinking that tiny little eight billion little minds running around planet Earth, because God's wholeness is the wholeness of his son, capital H. You cannot be hurt. You cannot be broken. You, or your heart can't break. When your heart breaks, you think you're broken. It's your ego identity that's breaking. And do not want to show your brother anything except your wholeness. And please, teacher for God, remember this. When you open your forums and you're teaching, don't tell your woe stories and how you suffered and you once were an alcoholic or once you were an A-type soul and you were the right royal arsehole and how horrible you were and all the trauma you've been through and how your mother was horrible and your father was this in the school. The minute they hear the pain in your voice, unhealed healer, don't. Because you make it real. You don't have to tell your story of woe unless there's a lesson of transcendence in it, a parable. Jesus taught in parables. Uh, um, David Hofmeister is very good at it. He uses movies. He teaches through parables. It's not just watch a movie and Ooh, let's cry together, you know, eat, pray, love. There's always a story. Then the story is, is to bring you into self-awareness, transcendence. If you're ever telling a story, you're not telling a story because you want people's pity or uh, you want to feel self-worth and look at me, I'm special, I've transcended the, the shit of the world. If you do that, it's all ego. The ego is appropriated right-mindedness for you. Now you're still in wrong-mindedness. You're still in ego. You tell a story, it's how I transcend it. There's no emotion in it. And as a teacher for God, if you're, if you're telling people the story of woe and you're complaining about the government, the politics and and global warming or cooling, which is a natural progression every planet in the universe goes through. And it's got nothing to do with anything that the politicians speak about because politics is really just stand-up comedy where the stand-up comedians are paid fortunes and they're bodyguards. <laughs> I'm just having fun out with it. <laughs> don't, don't, don't. Go there and bring your students down through your stories of woe. Step above the battlefield, teach for God. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Tiny mad idea. Tiny mad idea. Let's laugh at our madness 
and be grateful for all the shit we've been through and all the trauma and the judgments and the whatever trauma we went through. Because when we transcend it through understanding, we transcend into the awakening. Forgiveness, true forgiveness is the reality of understanding. Thank you that this happened. Thank you that you were willing to play this role where I aggrieved you or I was aggrieved by you. And now I understand it's all me. I created this and I look for a better way. And the Holy Spirit responded and I'm realizing my true divine Holy Spirit, son of God self. Show him, show your brother. He cannot hurt you. It's a wonderful lesson. And hold nothing against him or you hold it against yourself. Why? Because it's all you. When, you. when you attack someone, a politician, whatever it is, when you attack him, you're attacking a physical representation of you dreaming. And this is what Jesus meant by turn the other cheek. It wasn't just keep turning the other cheek so you can beat the bejesus out of you. Okay? Turning the other cheek is really symbolic of saying, we slapped you, you turn the other cheek. That didn't hurt. It's all funny. It don't actually exist. Okay? If he slaps you another time, then you're a baseball bat. Him. I'm joking. <laughs> anyway, teaching is done in many ways. Here I am exhibiting a possible way to share this. Open forum zoom zooming you know, zoom zooming across the universe only going forward because i can't find reverse um you dial into youtube you, you you go and do weekend seminars whatever there's many different ways um but remember that teaching isn't because you're special you know more you're reinforcing your knowing by sharing it we teach that which we most want to know but if you really know it you teach it by example because you can regurgitate a thousand of these words. There's the text. I see this every day. People repost the Course of Miracles, put nice pictures. You can all read. I, I don't need to read it to you. Teaching is, is by above all, by example. If I'm sitting here and telling you I'm so holy and look at me, I've transcended the self and I've been to the 17th plane of the Pallades and uh, you know, I've read up the entire Akashic records because I'm so special and the angel Michael came down and smoked a cigar with me. And I'm just talking cuck. Cuck is a good Afrikaans word for shit. Okay? If you're not living by example, you're just spiritually bullshitting yourself. You're wasting your time. Be authentic. This character Lush, Lou, Lou is, as my nickname goes. And remember, Luigi is not a spiritual name. Luigi is a nickname. I've been called Luigi for 50 years. It's nothing new. But, oh, look, Luigi, Muji, Papaji. Luigi is just a nickname. Please don't fancify it. It's either Luigi or Louis in Africa or Louise. I mean, there's a billion. Of, so it's either Lou or Luigi, if you, which is a, for clanging, a term of endearment for my friend, from my friend. If you're not authentic, stop. Don't be an inauthentic teacher. Don't be an unreal teacher. You chase people away. Spiritual magic mumbo jumbo, the billion modalities of it. It's all the self. If it's not making you self realize, it's making you realize it's nothing special. We're one dreamer, one dreamer dreaming up all billion. If it doesn't make you Realize self unconditionally loving and realize that you are the extension of God's love. Stop. Teaching should be healing. If you're not healing through teaching, stop. You're going about it wrong because it is the sharing of ideas and the recognition, the remembering that to share ideas is to strengthen them. Now that happens for both bullshit and truth. Wrong-minded ideas and right-minded ideas. Why? Because you're the son of God and you've got equal power in remembering or forgetting. Okay? And so, above all, by example, and there's nothing worse than a teacher of God and they tell their story, boo, crying on the stage and all that emotion coming out, oh, because I'm an empath. Empath, it's a label, it's an ego. Throw it away. What are you? Either a cerebral person or you're an empath. Nonsense. You're neither. You are that which is aware of all of it. Don't attach. Make yourself special. I cannot forget my need to teach what I've learned. And this is both the Christ mind and Lou speaking right now, which arose in me because I learned. 
Why? Because the minute I realize I am the love of God, I want to awaken the rest of myself as the love of God, not because I need to awaken them, because it's just me. And I want to share me with myself. It's all me. Okay, this is Christ speaking the same way. And you teach of God when you read that sentence and it speaks for you through you, then you know you're getting there. It's now Christ through you as you. I call upon you to teach. And that, in other words, and how are you going to teach? You're going to teach by, above all, by example, not just words. What you have learned, because by doing so, you can depend on it because you start to reinforce you because it's the thought reversal, seeing it another way. Make it dependable in my name. And he's now explaining my name and, and manual for teachers. It says, is there power in the name of Jesus? No, because it's symbolic. And Jesus is symbol, sim, symbolic of Christ in physical form, Christ mind. So make it dependable in my name because my name, not Jesus, not Christ, is the name of God's son. And what is the name of God's son? Listen very closely. There it is. Did you hear it? I'll do it again just in case you missed it. Listen super closely because I'm speaking it in a very high spiritual tone. Let me also give you God's name. Here it comes. Only the very spiritual people, you'll hear it at that very high frequency. It's so high, it's completely silent. There's no name. Great teacher, a man I wholly, truly respect as a profound and phenomenal teacher of, of the mysteries, uh, Professor Dr. J.J. Herte, wrote a fantastic book, The 72 Sacred Names of God. But they're not names of God. It's frequencies. The vibrational frequencies is the flower of life the aspects that bring us into the self-realization. God has no name. The name that can be named is not the eternal name, Dao De Ching. What I learn, I give you freely. Why? He's giving it to himself. And the mind, capital M, that was in me rejoices as you. Choose to hear it because it's you. The mind is one when it's capitalized, Holy Son. The Holy Spirit atones at one in all of us by undoing. So we're not actually learning. We're letting go of all these filters, misperceived perceptions, dogma, ideologies, judgment. So undoing. Undoing is letting go of judgment. The final judgment is the final undoing. My son is perfect. Okay, Can do no wrong. And thus lifts the burden you have placed in your mind through all the burdens of your beliefs. As a man judges, so he shall be judged. Why? His judgment of the world becomes his self-judgment. Why? The world's him. So is he judging it? He's judging himself for it. And as you judge, do you feel good when you judge? No. So as you judge, you're feeling negative. When you love, you feel good. And therefore, the sharing of it is the loving of it. By following him, capital H, the voice of the Holy Spirit, or the Christ mind, you are led back to God where you belong. God is a separate self. And how you can find the way, and, and how can you find the way except by taking your brother with you? Why? Because you can't awake in heaven and like, okay, now you're awake, Mr. Special. What about the rest of yourself? All of it, the entire universe awakes as one. And until the entire universe goes and disappears, the sun is still dreaming. So don't think you're special and you're going to escape. And now you're going to be up there with Jesus holding his hand, singing Kubaya while the angels play violin and trumpet and maybe the trombone. There is no such thing. When you awaken in Christ's mind, there's no more Jesus. And there's no memory of you. And all you want to do as the Christ mind is share the light with all. So while you incarnate, you're not fully in Christ's mind. You can be right-minded. When you reach the stage of the Jesus, Ramana Maharashi, Papa Jesus. They go quiet. The last, their last days, they go quiet. And even Nim Karoli Baba and his final day, and, and you, when you look at him, you just, I mean, you can't look at that saint and not be lifted by the light and love he is. And look, teachings of Ram Das, just, they just get lifted. You couldn't be in his presence without being lifted by that Christ mind because it's pure love, unconditional love. And in his last few moments, he just threw off his blanket. That's all he owned, a blanket. 
And he said, I'm free, I'm free, ran around. And then he just passed peacefully. He just put the body down. And the truth of him joined the Christ mind. And now, symbolically, when we put pictures of Jesus or the guru on our table, remember this, don't objectify. They are symbolisms for you, your purest self, holy self. Never put me on a pedestal, just, just body, mind, just like you. The truth of me is the truth of you. It's the truth of the guru. It's the truth of the Christ. It's the truth of Jesus. It's one. We're one. Awakening to ourselves. My part in the, in the atonement, here it is, is not complete until you join it and give it away. It's what we're doing right now. As you teach, so shall you learn. And there's a double meaning in this. So if you learn joyously, you teach joyously. If you teach joyously, you learn. You get all serious about it and try and, and get into the mental masturbation that intellectuals like to do when all the course means this and that. And, and they got to read the Ur text and then this is wrong and that line is right. You could read one verse in this course, Ur text or blue book or green book. Spirit new awakens you. You never have to read this book and you awaken. Many are, you know, like um, Meister Eckhart, the mystical Christian teacher, you know, 1200s. He got it, reading the Bible. Of course, they would, you know, try to excommunicate him when he was 90-something years old, but he got it. Why? Because when you invite Holy Spirit in, you could be reading um, chappies or newspaper, and there it is. I will never leave you or forsake you, because to forsake you, there it is would be to forsake myself. This is Christ's mind talking. And God who created me. Why? For we are one, one with God, one in self. You forsake yourself and God if you forsake any of your brothers because it's all you. Therefore, the best you can do in this world is get to a place of non-judgment. Non-judgment, no grief, nothing to forgive. You must learn okay, to see them as they are. You, extensions of the Christ mind. And understand that they belong to God as you do. How could you treat your brothers better than rendering them unto God the things that are of God? And before you judge, this, I offer this to the Holy Spirit. Reinterpret the way I'm seeing this. The at one the atonement, gives you the power of a healed mind. And a healed mind and awake mind, right-mindedness. But the power to create is God, is of God. Therefore, those who have been forgiven must devote themselves first to healing because having received the idea of healing, they must give it to hold. It. So as you get to those final stages of full transcendence, full awakening, or I hate the word, but I'll use it anyway as a concession, awakened enlightenment, enlightenment, the body's going to challenge you. So if it's challenging you with your thoughts and it's a headache or it's a cold or it's Physical pain, and of course the ego is the, 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 the more intensely you awake, the more intensely the ego attacks you physically. Why? Because the ego realizes you are awakening fast. The idea of itself is dissolving fast. So it's going to attack you physically. Don't let your physical pain drag you into the body-mind identity. So when you're being attacked physically, especially pain, disease, or whatever the case of physical suffering, which can drag you into depression very quickly, especially prolonged suffering and pain, above the battlefield. It doesn't mean you don't go to the doctor, don't take the medicine. Of course you do. But realize, interpret it another way. Hand it over to the Holy Spirit. Interpret this for me. Show me another way of seeing it. Don't bite into the pain. Don't go into spiritual mumbo jumbo. Karma, what have I done wrong? I deserve this. That one, it's because I'm forgiven and sins of the Father and I'm carrying cellular memory. And Don't go there, teachers for God. Don't go into magic magic formulas, and now I'm going to have to meditate this way and eat kelp or whatever it is. Go whichever feels right for you. If you want to take medication, not homeopath, go to the homeopath, take chemical, doesn't matter. If, if you haven't fully transcended the belief in medication, take it. The most important thing is where do you place your thoughts when the pain comes? Offer it, Holy Spirit. Let me interpret this for you. Pleasure and pain are but a thought away. Let the Holy Spirit show you. Let your correct mind show you another way to interpret it. And once the mind heals of the need for pain, the pain dissolves and the body restores itself because the miracle is the mind, right mind, your mind, you, the Son of God, remembering you are. 
the healing, the miracle is the mind awakening. And the body responds to whatever the mind experiences as itself. So once the mind heals, the body reciprocates the healing. Or it's time to go, put the body down, time to go, let go of the physical body and return to the Christ mind. The full power of creation cannot be expressed as long as any of God's ideas are withheld from the kingdom as body minds, ideas in the son of God's mind. The joint will of the sonship is the only creator that can create like the father because only the complete can think completely. And the thinking of God lacks nothing. So when you awaken as the Christ, remembering you are the son of God, you extend and create just like God because you're the same self essence as God. Everything you think that is not through the Holy Spirit is lacking. So anything that you think separate from, in other words, without unconditional love, is not true. It's not from, from the Holy Spirit, but from the ego. And you're very clearly addressing each and every single one of us. How can you, who are so holy, suffer? All your past, except its beauty, is gone, and nothing is left but a blessing. So the truth of you, the purity of you, the love you are remains. All the ideas of separateness, all the ideas of pain, fear, sin, and guilt, gone. I have saved all your kindness. Not that he needs to save it. It's just a way of explaining it because you are it. You are the kindness. And every loving thought you've ever had because you are a loving thought. I have purified them of the errors, gotten rid of all the misperceptions of what you are that hid their light, the filters that kept the light away and kept them for you in their own perfect radiance because you are perfect radiance. They are beyond destruction and beyond guilt. Okay, so people, oh, I'm guilty, I'm never worthy. Let it all go. They came from the Holy Spirit, the memory of God, Holy Spirit within you, the memory of God within you, the Holy Spirit, memory of God within you. And we know that God and what God creates is eternal. And that is you, the eternal love of God. You are God's eternal kingdom. You can indeed depart in peace because I have loved you as I have loved myself. Depart, in other words, you can put this body down. You can go with my blessing and for my blessing. So you become the blessing of the Christ mind to yourselves, your brothers. Hold it and share it because love only can be shared. There's no other purpose for love. Okay. Hold it and share it that it may always be ours. I place the peace of God in your heart and in your hands symbolically because you are the heart. You are the mind that is pure heart to hold and to share. The heart is pure to hold it and the hands are strong to give it. It's all symbolic now. We cannot lose. My judgment is strong as the wisdom of God. In other words, my Holy Son is, is perfectly um, perfect, healed. He just dreamt he traveled away, never left the kingdom in whose hearts and hands we have our being. And so, yeah, we start to, to see the course touch on essence, okay? So my judgment is as strong as the wisdom of God. So it's the memory of God, the knowing. Be yourself knowing. In whose hearts and hands we have our being, the essence of the Son. God is spirit. Spirit is being. Spirit extends and creates a sonship. Sonship is being. The son fell asleep and projected 8 billion beings. Projected himself, fractured, him, fractured his being. When he awakens, one being, one son of God. His quiet children are his blessed sons. The thoughts of God are with you. In other words, the rest of you, the sonship, is with you because you are one. And what one has, all have equally. What a phenomenal teaching. We'll stop there. And, and get some questions from the group. Next is uh, chapter five of the text, Course in Miracles, Healing and Wholeness. And we're now doing the ego's use of guilt. So how does the ego, in other words, our fallen mind, the, the tiny mad idea, the error of self-identity, identifying with the body-mind, identifying with our thoughts as terms of identity. How does that ego, because it's ego is just an erroneous, like a virus in the program, in the perfect program is a little virus. It says, no, 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 one plus one equals two. No, 
it equals 70. That's the virus. It's trying to tell you that, it's, that you're something that you're not. An active attack thought system. Thought system, it's not true. Okay, how does the ego use guilt? The ego's use of guilt, perhaps some of our concepts will become clearer and more personally meaningful if the ego's use of guilt is clarified. And I want to draw attention to two things here. Perhaps some of our concepts. Who's this our? See, the collective Christ mind awakening, because it's not just Jesus. Jesus is now joined with the Neem Karoli Babas, the Sai Baba, the Papa G's, the, those that have now transcended body-mind identification. And so they're all now one Christ mind. And that's what's talking to us. And as each one of us joins with that Christ, some of our concepts will become clearer and more personally meaningful if the ego's use of guilt is clarified. The ego has a purpose, just as the Holy Spirit acts. Ego's purpose is fear, because only the fearful can be egotistic. The minute you're in fear, ego. Okay? The ego's logic is as impeccable as that of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it comes from the same Son of God mind. Just mistaken, but it's the same Son of God's mind. So the ego is God. And that's why ego spirituality can be impeccably and soundly thought through, even though it's, the foundation is wrong, because your mind is the means at its disposal to side with heaven or earth. So it decides right-minded or wrong-minded as it elects. But again, remember that both are in you while you dream. Darkness is not, there's no darkness in, the, in, in truth. In the universe, the dream, it's darkness and light. In God, there's no light and darkness. The idea of light and darkness is only in the wrong mind. The minute you move into the right mind, pure light, there's no darkness. Okay, so yin yang symbol, the yin yang symbol is the son of God in God, where a part of him is awake, a white light, like the God white light, dark, the dark part of the yin, and the yang is the dreaming part, circling each other. When the sun awakens, the yin yang dissolves into a pure white circle, and the outer line of the circle is the body. It dissolves in what is pure light. No yin yang. In heaven, there is no guilt because the kingdom is attained through the atonement, the joining of one, which releases you to create, to extend as God does. The word create is appropriate here because once what you have made is undone, reinterpreted by the Holy Spirit, the blessed residue is restored and therefore continues in creation. Now, let's highlight this word because it's so important. We get lost when we read this, but this is such an important word in the course, okay? So what you've made, the universe, is undone. It dissolves, the dissolving of the universe, disappearance of the universe, Gary Renard's book, okay? It dissolves, why? Because it's not true. And first, it dissolves through reinterpretation. You realize it's all me. So it's all love, misinterpreted, perceived, projected, attacked. Now I see it, and so now I love my creations. And what remains? the blessed residue, the essence of the true self. God is spirit. The, the essence of God is his essential nature, love. And so you're made from that same essence. And that essence, which is the self, the essential nature of the self, love, passionate love, creative love, is the blessed residue. The truth remains. And it's completely restored to what it truly is, love, and therefore continues in doing what it always does. And God extends and therefore extending is creating. So the blessed residue, the self, continues to expand and create the sharing of love. What is truly blessed is incapable of giving rise to guilt and must give rise to what it is, joy. This makes it invulnerable to the ego because ego cannot know the self, the true spirit. And spirit has no idea ego exists because its peace is unassailable. The very essence of what we are is joy and peace. And joy and peace united we call love, the essence of being, the son of God. God extends love and through our perceptual awakened awareness, Love is peace and joy, the expression of life itself bubbling through our passionate nature. It is invulnerable to disruption 
because to disrupt, invulnerable to disruption because it is whole. So there's there's no conflict. It's it's oneness. It's there's no separateness. There's no difference. It's one essence, one blessed residue. Guilt is always disrupted, okay, because it wants to break that which is true. Anything that engenders fear is divisive because it obeys the law of division. Division, separation, fallen asleep, separate. If the ego is the symbol of separation, it is also the symbol of guilt. So guilt and separation are one and the same thing. So whenever you're feeling guilty, you're feeling separate from, and therefore others attack, defend. Guilt is more than merely not of God. It is the symbol of attack on God. So whenever feeling guilty, you're attacking the self, which is the son of God, and therefore you're attacking God's creation. And when you think you're unworthy, you're feeling guilty. When you think someone else is unworthy, you're apportioning guilt to them. You're attacking them. Guilt is the poison that prevents the self from being itself knowingly. This is a totally meaningless concept except to the ego. But do not underestimate the power of the ego's belief in it because it's the power of the ego's belief in it that makes it the real world. The real world isn't real at all. The real world is, is heaven and the kingdom, and the kingdom is unseen by eyes of ego. This is the belief from which all guilt really stems, that we can be separated. The ego is the part of the mind that believes in division, takes sides, and then attacks. We're right, we're special, we're good, we're correct, attack someone else. How could part of God detach itself without believing it is attacking it? And it's impossible because God is one. We spoke before of the authority problem as based on the concept of us usurping God's power. That's our, that whole power. We have an authority problem. That's why when truth comes our way, no, 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 absolutely not. And who does he think he is? And look at that ego. And look at he thinks he's the son of God or teacher for God. Authority problem. When the authority problem comes up, recognize the ego speaking, as ego always speaks first. Wake up in the morning, ego's voice is the first voice you hear. Be silent. That's why gratitude in the morning is so important, because the minute you can give your thoughts to gratitude in the morning, you bring yourself into right-mindedness, and you can continue your day that way. But the minute you address the ego and, and the conflict in thoughts, it throws at you first thing in the morning, it drags you the whole day, unless you go be still and allow a holy instant to come to the ego believes that this is what you did because it believes that it is you. How's this? So the ego believes it's you and then tries to convince you that you are an ego. If you identify with an ego, in other words, this is what I am. I am a doctor. I am a man. I am a... You've identified with, with what you think you are. You will experience guilt inevitably and you will fear punishment. Why? Because if you believe you're this, you can make mistakes. If you realize your spirit, how can the spirit make mistake? The ego is quite literal, a fearful thought. Okay, so there it is. What is ego? Ego is quite literally a fearful thought. It's a thought of fear. And so how did ego come about? As we fall asleep, we forget what we are. And then so we can't remember. Light appears in our dream. Oh, we fear the light. We think, oh, my goodness, what is this? But we can't help but infuse it. So we go, then we must have done something wrong. I'm unworthy. And what if that which created me is going to destroy me? First thought of fear, guilt, subdivision, separation, abandonment, what everyone in this world goes through. And so we now fear punishment. And that's where the idea of a fearful, fear God. How can you love and fear God? How can two juxtaposed paradoxical concepts exist in truth? Impossible. It's either love or fear. And love is true, fear is not. So where truth abides, love, fear cannot be. Where light abides, darkness cannot be. Where light is light, what else is there but light? Where truth is true, where is fear? Truth, love. Light, love. What is fear? Illusion. An idea. Literally a fearful thought. A thought becomes an idea. How ridiculous the idea of attacking God may be to the sane mind, never forget that the ego is not sane. It re represents the delusional system and speaks for it. Listening to the ego's voice means that you believe it is possible to attack God 
or at least a concept of God, and that a part of him, capital H, has been torn away by you, that you can observe the power, that you can make us real. And that's where all these ideas and let's live forever, longevity and you know, health and, and, and mind, body, spirit, health. There's no such thing as mind, body, spirit. There's body, mind, illusion, okay? And there's spirit, truth. You can't have balance between mind, body, spirit. You're either spirit or you mind, body. There is no balance in mind, body, spirit. As so again, new age, magical, spiritual, egoic, mumbo jumbo nonsense. Spirit or nothing at all. I am that I am means I acknowledge I am spirit, the essence. The, the sacred essence of God. Fear of retaliation from without follows. Why? Because you believe you've been torn away and therefore you can be punished. Retaliation, punishment from follows because of the severity of guilt is so acute that it must be projected. And as much as you hate and you want to destroy and murder, and we all have those thoughts when we're trapped in our ego body mind, we fear the same thing may be done to us. We fear the death and demise of the body mind. I saw it today at a funeral. Uh, man, the masks came out, you know, because what if we get COVID and we die again? And the funeral is a great place to remind people of the fallibility of the limitedness of the body mind. And, and man, we want to prolong this life together. We don't live because when you're in fear, you're not living, you're dying. Fear is death. Love is life. Whatever you accept into your mind has reality for you. Why? Because it's your reality. You're creating it with every thought you have. It is your acceptance of, of it that makes it real for you. If you enthrone the ego in your mind, you are allowing it. So in other words, you put, you put the ego on the throne. You give the authority of your thoughts to the ego. In other words, to identification thoughts, you are allowing it to enter and, and makes it your reality. This is because the mind is capable of creating reality, okay, which is creating love, or making illusions, the universe. Making, make manifest. And what does the ego do? It appropriates creation into making. And then we, we have hundreds and thousands of videos, thousands of spiritual videos, how to manifest love, relationships, money, wealth, all ego. To make manifest, to make real in this illusion is ego. Spirit has no need to make. It's the acceptance that all of it is itself. And by holding and giving, appropriating, putting Holy Spirit on the throne of our mind, what is meant to be, seek ye first the kingdom, and what is meant to be will come your way. And it'll come abundantly. Now, it doesn't mean you don't need to act. So it may need, mean that you still get up and you still go to the shops and you still get up and you still cook. And, uh, you know, it's not, okay, I don't have to go to the grocery shops. God will provide. And I wake up and there's manna in the kitchen. There's no manna in the kitchen. Manna is you get up, you go to the shop, you buy the food, and tonight you cook dinner. Okay, but if you don't act, you know, you, know, you want to win the lotto, meet God halfway, buy a lotto ticket. So it still means act. It doesn't mean just provide and, and, and fear of money. It simply means all of it is you. But if you chase it, it's ego. If you allow it to come naturally to your passionate nature, it will stay because it's the extension of you. And of course it stays because you keep extending it. You keep growing it. You keep becoming it. As I said before, you must learn to think with God. Okay. And if you're judging, you're not thinking with God. And if you're accepting it is, acceptance takes you there. The acceptance of what is. To think with him is to think like him, capital A. This engenders joy. So if your thinking engenders joy, you're thinking with God. If it engenders guilt, you're not. Because it is natural to think joyously. Guilt is a sure sign. Guilt or vengeance is a sure sign that your thinking is unnatural, therefore egoic. Unnatural thinking is always will always be attended with guilt because it is the belief in fear, sin, guilt. Guilt believes in guilt and believes in attacking, assaulting that who is guilty. The ego does not perceive sin as a lack of love, but as a positive act of assault. And so it takes it to the extreme negative. This is necessary to the ego survival, because as soon as you regard sin as lack, think of it, if you think of sin as lack, you will automatically attempt 
to remedy the situation. And the ego doesn't want you to see the idea of sin as lack. Because to believe in sin, guilt, is lacking. What's lacking? Truth. The reality of the love you are. And so if you realize sin, my concept of sin is actually my concept of lack. Let me remedy this. What happens? You remedy the idea of lack. Scarcity goes away. You realize the abundance of the sonship. What happens to the ego? Dissolves. And you will succeed because now you're acting naturally, passionately in the right way that you are. And you will succeed. And the ego regards this as doom. But you must learn to regard this as freedom. Don't listen to that little voice. But you're not worthy. You're not good enough. You're not this. You're not that. Too skinny. You're too fat. You're too short. You're too bad. Too bald. Tit, 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 tit. Nah. No. I am. But simply reside there in gratitude. The guiltless mind cannot suffer. So if we suffer, you're in guilt. Okay. So if you're in pain, suffering disease, find the guilty thoughts. Find the thoughts that have not been forgiven. And once the thoughts have been forgiven, watch, the, watch it be lifted from you. Being sane, the mind heals the body because it has been healed. So when, when you're in the right mind, you're in the sane mind. And the mind heals the body because it has been healed. An unhealed mind creates an unhealed body. And so whenever you see some form of disease, realize there's something still to be gotten rid of. So go look for the guilt. Go look for the fear. And allow Holy Spirit to remove from you. You can't fix it. Okay? There's no shadow work to be done yet. Shadow work is simply give the subconscious hidden guilt. Holy Spirit, show me another way to see it. Let me see how I'm re reinterpreting sins of the past, guilting feelings, abandonment issues, rejection issues, problems with my parents, problems with my ancestors. Find the guilt and offer it to the Holy Spirit. And as the mind realizes, it's all me. I've dreamt up all of this, all the conflicts, all the pain, all the trauma, all the horrible stuff that happened to me. I put in my path so that I could find another way. I'm so grateful for all of that because through finding another way, I found myself. And through the knowing of myself, I know my essential nature. I connect with my essence. And as I connect with my essence, I know my source. I know my father and I are one. The sane mind cannot conceive of illness because it cannot conceive of attacking anyone or anything, anyone including your self, body, mind, projection. It's all you. Love your creation. Love the pain, not love, love the pain as in love pain, but love the, the way you have pain, love that. Love your body. Replace pain with loving thoughts, and the pain will dissipate. And, but it's the mind that is healing. The pain is a symbol that the mind is co not completely healed. I said before that illness is a form of magic. Okay, Magic, illusion. What do you call a magic show? A show of illusion. So magic is illusion. It's not true. Okay. Illness is magic. It's not true. So you can correct it. There's no order difficulty in miracles. doesn't matter what someone says, and it's genetic or it's cancer or it's a tumor. Hey, this character that you're looking at had a brain tumor the size of a fist. It appeared to die for four hours. Here I am talking to you 22 years later. No, I, I had no intention of resuscitating or whatever, resurrecting this body. I had no idea. I was just heading in the right direction. And so spirit reprojected back into this form. Why go into nappies again? So if I can do it, and I was an angry, very angry <laughs> person who, who believed that God had a sixth sense of humor and the world was indeed cruel and there was a war going on between heaven and earth. I believed in duality. Even though I could see angels and spirits and all these wonderful spiritual mumbo jumbos. Great conversations and healings would come through. Talk to dead people and bring messages from the spirit world. Still trapped in delusion. And I heal. So if I can, this very fallible, very human. When I say, oh, I'm just human, means I'm just ego. Oh, it's not my fault. I'm just human. Oh, in other words, you're admitting you're, you're an ego and you believe in it. Ego, human is not an excuse. Okay. 
It doesn't work anymore. It's no longer valid. It's not a reason. It's an invalid excuse. I'm not human. I am. That I am. And so if this could heal, that can heal too. Because I didn't have many loving thoughts at the time. If I didn't, and I, and I was still shown away, Christ's mind showed me away, took me out of that, and, and, and I'm still here 22 years later, sharing the voice, transcending my body-mind delusion. If I can, this aspect of our one true self can, all of us can. I'm a perfect example that someone who is truly lost in translation, I mean, use the spiritual word, truly fucked up. If I can, you can. Because I'm not special. I'm ego overachiever. Okay. The need to prove all these things I had to do. Never good enough. My life sounds incredulous, unbelievable. You did that, that, that became this so many degrees, so many, so many different careers, so many. Why? Ego. Prove I was worthy. If I can transcend this, so can you. Please remember this. I'm just <laughs> No different to all of you, and very fab, fab, fam, flammable, uh, fallible in my humanness and my ego identity. Very, very. Uh. I used to joke and say, What I don't have in height, I make up for an ego. I can transcend this. So can you. It might be better to say that it is a form of magical solution that keeps you trapped in the body mind belief. The ego believes that by punishing itself, you. Okay, your body, mind, identity, it will mitigate the, the, the punishment of God. So then God doesn't need to punish me because I will punish myself. See, God, I can destroy this body that I have made and you have no power over it. Yet even in this arrogant, in a, yet even in this, it is arrogant. It attributes to God a punishing intent. Vengeance shall be mine, said the Lord. I mean, they love to quote that in movies, you know, in Reservoir Dogs, not the nine o'clock news. It's all nonsense. God has no punishment at all. And then takes this intent into its own prerogative. It tries to observe all the functions of God as it perceives them. Because punishment is not a function of God. Because it recognizes that only total allegiance can be trusted. So it wants to align with the ideas of God and then take control and responsibility as if it is. You know, what's the difference between God and an ego? God doesn't think he's an ego, but the ego certainly thinks he's a God. No difference between doctors and God, architects, professionals, and God. So watch that ego identification with this is what I do, and look at me, I'm a doctor, or whatever. Okay. The ego cannot oppose the laws of God any more than you can, but it can and it will interpret them according to what it wants just as you can. So self-fulfilling prophecies. It believes in something and goes looking for it and then proves it's right. Hell, in South Africa, we once had a politician go through the Bible to prove that um, the African race wasn't human because the Bible said so and wrote a whole thesis and doctorate. This racist, MF, God bless his soul, he's one of us, he's the self, would punch the Bible in his political stands on every Sunday at every church gathering and proved that African people aren't human. The ego will find anything it wants to, to appropriate belief. Don't. Step above the battlefield. If there's a judgment, it's not of God. If there's an idea that you need to punish, it's not of God. If you watch the news and there's a war and you've chosen a side, you're a wrong mind. Step above the battlefield, no judgment. You pray that yourselves awaken and you hand it over to the Holy Spirit that you see it anew. Because once you have no war within you, you won't go looking for it. That is why the question, what do you want? What is it that you truly want? I want this, I want a lover, I want a house, I want a car, I want a Porsche, I want a Ferrari, I want another motorcycle, I want a wife, I want a husband, I want a holiday house, I want billions. Why do you want it? Because I want to be happy. Ah, what we really want, even the idea of enlightenment is because we really want to be happy eternally. Not happy, sad, happy, sad. We want to be happy eternally. You are answering it every minute and every second and each moment of decision is a judgment that is anything but ineffectual. 
its effects will follow automatically until the decision is changed. What do I want? I want the peace of God because the peace of God feels great. And it's amazing because this makes me happy. The minute you objectify it, Holy Spirit cannot give you personal objectified desires. It gives you what you truly want, which is to be happy. And sometimes the only way you'll be happy is if you've got to knock your head 150,000 million times and realize, oh, there must be a better way. And so all of those bumpings, all of those pains, all of those sufferings, all those heartbreaks was a way that you could find the love and joy and peace of God, which is you, the kingdom of God. Remember, though, that the alternatives themselves are unalterable. The Holy Spirit, like the ego, is a decision that you must make. Decide for body, mind, identification, fear, guilt, sin, holy, uh, the ego, or choose right-mindedness, love, peace, joy. It's a choice. If you want to judge, does it make you feel good? Do you want to blame? Does it make you feel good? Do you want to attack, take sides? How is that working for you? How's politics and taking a side and attacking the government and that one and that. How does it work? Does it make you feel good? If you don't feel good, it makes you angry. It makes you upset. Why are you doing it? Only hurting the self. Let it go. Together, they constitute all alternatives the mind can accept and obey. Choose the Holy Spirit. Choose the ego. The Holy Spirit and the ego are the only choices open to you. God created one. And so you cannot eradicate the choice, which is the Holy Spirit. You made the other. You dreamt it up. It's an idea. What is mine? A cluster of thoughts that you bought into and made solid for yourself. Ideas. You made the other. And so you can. In other words, you can get rid of it because it's nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. And so you made it. It doesn't exist. It's unreal. Only what God creates is irreversible and unchangeable. Thank God. What you made can always change because when you do not think like God, you are not really thinking at all. So any thought that you have that has any judgment whatsoever, it's ego. When you just observe and extend yourself lovingly and act lovingly, which is kind, compassionate, caring, without any judgment, without any attachment, without any request for re you know for return it back to you why don't you need it back to you because as you offer it, it becomes you then you know that when you love it unconditionally all of it you're thinking like like god delusional ideas are not real thoughts although you can believe in them and of course we do but you are wrong the function of thought comes from god and is in God, and where are you in God? And therefore, what are you? A thought, thought in form, thought form, as a part of his thoughts. You cannot think apart from him, for you are God's thought. Okay, so God is in you, and his thoughts, capital again, you are a thought. Okay, the thought which is his creation. You cannot be apart from the mind, mind, God, pure consciousness. You are that. Irrational thought is disordered thought. God orders your thought, sorry, God himself orders your thought because your thoughts was created by him. Capital H there. Guilty feelings are always a sign that you do not know that you are an extension of God himself and that you are a thought in God's mind. A thought, a loving thought, loving thought form in God's mind. They also show you that you believe you can think apart from God and you want to. Why? And everybody does. And that's why we want to hang on to this world and we want to have all our spiritual magic and we want to be abundant, but we don't want to die. Oh, my goodness, we're afraid of where we're going because we don't really understand it. We don't really believe it. We don't certainly don't remember that we are dreaming. Every disordered thought is attended by guilt as its inception always and maintained by guilt in its continuum. Guilt is inescapable by those who believe they order their own thoughts and must therefore obey its dictates. And let me just stop there for a second. So when we get sick, we believe that this body is controlled by the ego mind and it deserves to get sick. And so it responds in the same way. When you are feeling unwell, 
if you're getting sick, if you're in pain, find a guilty thought and realize it doesn't belong there. You, holy son of God, your thoughts are pure. Your thoughts are loving towards self and all selves because you dreamt this up, all of it. You fractured yourself and you're every single person seeing yourself from 8 billion vantage points. Forgive all of it, all of it. No attachment. If it triggers you emotionally, if you have an expectation of it, you're trapped in the ego. Find those guilty thoughts, release them, offer them over to the Holy Spirit. Show me another way to see this. Don't just take it away from you. The Holy Spirit can't take them away from you. The Holy Spirit's in your mind. It's in the same mind. What he can do is shine light on it. In other words, show you a new way of seeing it. This makes them feel responsible for the errors without recognizing that by accepting this responsibility, they are acting irresponsibly. Don't take responsibility. It's all me. If the sole responsibility of the miracle worker, yes, that's you, is to accept the atonement for yourself, for himself, yourself, I assure you that, and I assure you that it is, then the responsibility for what is atoned for cannot be yours. Offer it to the Holy Spirit. The dilemma cannot be resolved except by accepting the solution of undoing the letting go of, and we fear the undoing because we fear our own demise. We think that when Holy Spirit undoes this identity, then who am I? If I can't remember myself and my history and my past and tell my story, etc., etc., you would be responsible for the effects of all your wrong thinking if it could not be undone. And therefore, because it can, you aren't responsible for the effects. You know, offer it to the Holy Spirit and it'll be undone for you. You've created it. You're responsible for creating it, but you're not responsible. You cannot, you cannot undo what you've created because it's you, you extending, misperceived you extended. Offer it. It's reinterpreted. It's all you as the light of awareness, as the light and love and creation of God. The purpose of the atonement is to save the past in purified form only. Only the love remains. If you accept the remedy for disordered thought, a remedy whose efficacy is beyond doubt. How can its symptoms remain? So body, mind, pain, suffering, illness, delusion. Get rid of those delusions, those filters of separation. Reparation, healing. The continued decision, continued decision to remain separate is the only possible reason for the continued guilty feelings or experiences of suffering. Now, find it in your subconscious. It's hidden there. Ask to be shown. We have said this before, but did not emphasize the destructive result of this decision. Any decision of the mind will affect both behavior and experience. Choose again. What you want, you expect. And this is the way we are. We can't change it. Even the holy awakened mind, what it wants, it expects. This is not delusional. Your mind does make your future and it will turn it to the experience of the future and it will turn it back to full creation at any minute if it accepts the atonement first what is accepting the at one minute first you are one with the father the father is one with you you are the holy son of god at one with all your universal creations it's all you accept it and realize i have never left the kingdom I'm just dreaming I have. And now that I've listened to this inner voice that has shown me this, that it's telling me that I'm dreaming, I listen to the voice, I follow the voice, and I awaken and realize it was just a dream. It will also return to full creation the minute it has done so. Why? Because you are love. You are continually creating. How do we know this? Universe, science is proven. Quantum is proven. Universe is still extending. You are the dreamer. If God is still extending and you're in God, as God extends, you extend. Your dream then appears to extend. Universe still extending. Universe still growing. Body still growing. More people. Okay. So what happens when you awaken? What you see as the universe becomes pure light. Pure light interpreted as the love of God, the love of you, the dreamer. All the body minds dissolve as it becomes pure light. Mountains, planets, solar systems, universe becomes Pure light, no bodies and darkness in between. It gets reinterpreted as the Son of God's self, forever extending the love of God, which is 
himself forever extending the kingdom. Having given up the disordered thoughts, the proper ordering of thoughts becomes quite apparent. It's all love. It's all the love of God. I am the kingdom. I am the love of God. We are one. Amen. Up there, and we'll just have a short discussion before we continue. We now continue with text chapter five, healing and wholeness, and we move to um, chapter five point seven, time and eternity. And and by the way, these are paradoxical sent words. Time and eternity are opposing ideas. One is true, one is illusion. This is a fundamentally incredibly important um, fundamental. So I'm losing the words here. But you have to absorb this in your being, in the knowing of your being capital H there, God in his knowledge, in the knowing of himself as God, pure consciousness. So you could change the sentence to pure consciousness is not waiting, but his kingdom, us. So kingdom is not a palace God created. We are the kingdom, but his kingdom, capital H, is bereft while you wait. Because you are the kingdom and you're unaware of it. Okay, so it's not like God is missing us, but he wills for his son to remember himself as the extension of God. All the sons, the sonship of God are waiting for your return. Now, we speak of God only has one son, but that's in the dream state. One son is dreaming. And it's a call to the one son dreaming to awaken and realize there's only one son. And as he awakens, he realizes there's billions of trillions of sons, cells, the extension of God's love. You are but one son that fell asleep. Okay. As I explain in my book, um, A School Called the Universe, I, I, I tell the story of the four uh, as if the son is called Lucian, the angel that fell asleep and dreamt the dream of darkness. Lucian then gets then then attacks himself and calls himself Lucifer, the ego, wrong mind. And it's just a story way of telling how the separation came about, um, how time, time, space, illusion, time, matter, space, illusion came about. Okay, so the sonship, the rest of God's creation, the kingdom, as you are part of the kingdom, is awaiting us, us returning, returning as one son, just as you're awaiting theirs. And this is why we share this. This is why we're doing the non-dual Christian mysticism called A Course in Miracles, because we realize we're not separated. We're one dreamer dreaming that we're 8 billion beings. Delay does not matter in eternity, because eternity is always now. But it is tragic in time, the concept of time. You have elected to be in time, wrong mind, rather than eternity, right mind. Always here now, be here now. And therefore, believe you are in time. Why? You've elected it, and by your choice, you believe you are in time. Yet your election is both free and alterable. You can alter it. It's a decision. You do not belong in time because there's no such thing. Your place is only in eternity. Remember, eternity, here now, always in the now. You haven't left. Nothing's changed. You are still the Holy Son of God. You're just dreaming that you're all these beings on this planet, and you're now experiencing yourself individually from 8 billion fractal perspectives. Okay, So you are only in eternity where God, capital H himself, placed you forever as the extension of his love. Guilty feelings are the preservers of time. They keep you bound. And where is guilt? Past. You can't have guilt future. Guilt's always past. So what happens with guilt? It gets brought into your present awareness. It gets brought into the now. And what happens to it? You're then projecting it into your future. So guilt brought into the past becomes a fearful future. And what do we fear? We don't fear the past. We've gone through it. We're guilty of the past or we dislike it. We resist it. 
but we're always fearful of more. Hence, we go to psychics and read tarot and astrology and whatever, because we want to know the future because guilt keeps us bound here now in time, not in eternity, and then gets projected into our future. Guilty feelings, thoughts, ideas are preservers of time. Past, present, future are illusion. There is no past, present, future. Only in illusions is there past, present, future. In truth, there's eternity, always here now. They induce fear of retaliation because you're guilt, you're going to be attacked. Abandonment. The first principle of falling asleep, abandonment. Fear enters, rejection, punishment, and thus ensures that the future will be like the past, past, present, future. If you bring in guilt into the present, your future is fearful. This is the ego's plan of continuity. It gives the ego a false sense of security by believing that you can escape from it. Why? Let's go to the tarot, psychic, angel card readings, tarot readings. Oh, we're going to go there and now I can escape. But you're creating it with the same mind. You can't. You have to ask Holy Spirit, show me a new way of interpreting it. Let go of guilt. Let go of resistance. What you resist persists. But you can and you must change this. And you must and you will. God offers you the continuity of eternity in exchange. Be as you are. Be here now. When you choose to make this exchange, choose right-mindedness, no judgment. Let go of guilt. Use forgiveness to let go. You will simultaneously exchange, and it's a glad exchange, guilt for joy. Because you'll understand why you had to experience it. Because it brought you here now in the awakened awareness of self, okay? Viciousness for love and pain for peace. This is the glad exchange. Show me another way of seeing this. The only prayer we can truly have while we're dreaming is show me another. You can't ask for anything. Show me another way of seeing this. My role is only to unchain your will. Holy Spirit is yet to. The memory breaks, unchains our will to align our will with God's will and set it free. Your ego cannot accept this freedom. Your ego, your identification, who you think you are and have been and what you've done and your past dragged into the present and will oppose it at every possible moment and in every possible way, including the attachment to spiritual or religious concepts and making yourself feel special because you believe in the blood of Jesus and now you're saved as opposed to you enact, bring the Christ awareness into yourself as the self and act like Jesus. Walk in his footsteps means behave like he did. Non-judgment, unconditional love of all of it. And as its maker, you recognize what it can do. You can heal because you are healing itself, because you gave it the power to do so. Why? Because you exist in God's mind as a part of his creation, loving creation, and you have the same ability because you're made from the same blessed essence and therefore extend that into the rest of the creation, your creation. Remember yourself always. Another way to say that is remember the kingdom always. And remember that you who are part of the kingdom cannot be lost. The capital M mind. The mind that was in me, this is the Christ mind talking, is in you. For God creates with perfect fairness in total equality. It's only in the world we've made that there's no equal. Let the Holy Spirit, let the memory of God remind you. So you'll see that the word remind is often it's attached to the Holy Spirit. Remind you always of capital H, his fairness. And let me teach you how to share it with your brothers, with the rest of yourselves. How else? can the, the chance to claim it for yourself be given you? The two voices speak for different interpretations of the same thing. And this is why it's so important. We often say it's just illusions. Oh, it's illusions. It's not real. No, no. It's all you just interpreted differently. One filter is pure light, love. The other one is filled with ideas. When you shine the light through it, it, manifests as it is, appears as physical manifestation so the voice for god the holy spirit pure light the voice for the ego interpretations of judgment but it speaks of the same thing simultaneously because it's all you 
or almost simultaneously, because as I have often said, the ego always speaks first. Alternate, alternate alternative interpretations were unnecessary until the first one was made. The ego believed it was separate. Because at first, when we're all in the sonship, it was just pure life. There was no difference between I am this one and I am that one because it's all one and the same. Ego always speaks in judgment. So when you wake up in the morning, watch that voice and, 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 and start looking out for it. And you'll start looking out for it gladly. You wake up and there's a voice going and you go, ah, there you are. Don't engage. Just go to whom do you appear? Because I, the Holy Son of God, I'm not engaging. And then you, the ego, don't tell the ego this and it'll never figure it out. Always shows you your shadow self, your subconscious guilt. So when it attacks, don't go into the discussion and into the detail. Step above the battlefield. What unforgiven thought of guilt or attack still lies in my awareness? And now that I see it, I bring it into myself and Holy Spirit, show me another way to interpret this. And, and he's given us the tool, forgive, 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 until you realize, ah, oh, this happened. So I could realize myself as God's Holy Spirit. Spirit, God's Holy Son. Okay, so the ego speaks in judgment and the Holy Spirit reverses its decision much as a higher court has the power to reverse a lower court's decision in this world. The ego's decision are always wrong because they are based on error they were made to uphold. Nothing the ego perceives is interpreted correctly because there's always a judgment. Not only does the ego cite scripture for its purpose, often, and man doesn't do it well, but it even interprets scripture as a witness to itself. The Holy Scriptures and spiritual people, by the way, not just Bible, they do this often. The Bible is a fearful thing in the ego's judgment. How do we know? Fear God, fear, fear, fear. Satan, damnation, hell, punishment, retribution, choosing a sign, God chooses signs. God has favorite people. God only has one son and the rest, I don't know what we are. Jesus was the son. What are we? Uh, we're his children, but we're not his son. So there's one special son. God doesn't judge. God has no need for worship. God doesn't have an ego in which to feel good when you worship him and praise him. You want to praise God? Live like Jesus did. Unconditionally loving all your creation. The Bible is a fearful thing in the ego's judgment. Because it's seen in a point of duality and it re enhances the duality. And you hear it still today in churches and charismatic movements. It's all money making, self appraising. Look at me, I'm special. Let's build a church for God. It's all about themselves. And then they want to, oh, God wants me to be abundant. And the only reason they built the church is to make money. You know, policemen and priests, same thing. Okay. Both crooks. Perceiving as it as frightening, it interprets it fearfully. And I'm not trying to judge policemen. I'm sure there's some great ones, but I'm still trying to find really genuinely honest churchmen, churchians that truly give unconditionally. I've seen many a Catholic priest do that, where they give themselves unconditionally and live very menial lives, poor lives, but they serve. And then we have this new age movement and it's Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And let's build these massive cathedrals and, you know, massive car lots. And we, everybody, Tides and the minister's so wealthy and buys himself Ferraris. That's not love. God has no need for marketing. God has the need for us to align our will silently within ourselves with Him. He will to all thy will. Amen. Perceiving it as frightening, it interprets it fearfully. Being afraid, you do not appeal to the higher court because you believe its judgment would be against you. And so you never look at your sin because you're afraid to be judged. And yet if you looked upon it with the eyes of the Holy Spirit, with no judgment, you realize this too is just an illusion. Forget the past. Don't project it into the future. Be here now. Be yourself knowingly as that blessed residue, the essence of God is the Son. You're not made in God's image. You're extended as himself. There are many examples how the ego's interpretation are misleading, and, but a few will suffice to show you how the Holy Spirit can reinterpret them in its own light. So it uses some of the Bible passages here. As he, sh as he sow, he, so shall ye reap. 
He interprets it to mean that what you consider worthy of cultivating, you will cultivate in yourself. What you find worthy and important with a non-judgmental mind will grow in you. What you find important, judgment and vengeance, you'll grow within you. What you judge will be your own judgment. Your judgment of what is worthy makes it worthy for you. And so your judgment of what is unworthy will make it unworthy for you too. There's no unworthy. It's all you love your creations with no judgment. Okay. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. We love that one. Slam our fist, you know, pull out the six shooter. Is easily reinterpreted as remember. If you remember that the ideas increase only by being shared. The statement emphasizes that vengeance can not be shared because it's an ego idea. Give it therefore to the Holy Spirit who will undo it in you because it does not belong in your mind, which is a part of God. Your mind and God's mind is one and the same. The true, your true Holy Son of God mind, not the ego body mind identity. I will, uh, well, we love this. And in Africa, we love this with ancestors and sins of the father, seven generations, tenfold back. You're carrying the sins of the father. We then take it into science and genetics is passed on. Nonsense. Okay. I will visit the sins of the father and unto the third and fourth generation. They're not the fifth one, just third and fourth. Thank God. And as interpreted by the ego is particularly vicious. Okay. And of course, cellular memory gets passed down and your mother was pregnant and she was unhappy and smoking cigarettes and drinking Jack Daniels. And that's why you're weird. Excuses, ego excuses, let go. It becomes merely an attempt to guarantee the ego's own survival. To the Holy Spirit, the statement means that in later generations, capital H, he can still reinterpret what former generations had misunderstood as you're experiencing right now, and thus release the thoughts from the ability to produce fear. Not that you will be punished for what your daddy did, you're only being punished if you believe you were unworthy of your dad's judgment. Let it go. Okay, it was just trapped in the ego. Forgive him because, because of his judgments, you sought another way. And yeah, you are now transcending your ego body mind identity. The wicked shall perish becomes a statement of at one minute atonement. We join. What perishes the ego wrong mind? If the word per perish is understood as being undone, Every loveless thought must be undone, a word the ego cannot even understand. Because to undo, it means to dissolve, it never existed. You don't destroy it, just it never existed. To the ego, to be undone means to be destroyed. The ego will not be destroyed because it is part of your thought, but because it is uncreative and therefore unsharing. It will be reinterpreted to release you from fear. The part of your mind that you have given to the ego, wrong mind, Body mind identification, wrong mind, will merely return to the kingdom where the, your whole mind belongs. So the true you has no wrong mindedness. It's just a tiny mad idea. It believes it was real and will dissolve when seen in the light of awareness, Christ mind. You can delay the completion of the kingdom in your understanding, but you cannot introduce you cannot introduce the concept of fear into it because where there is love, there can be no evil. Where there is light, there can be no darkness. Where there is love, there can be no fear. Okay, you, Only in duality is a paradox possible. You need not fear the higher court will condemn you. The Christ mind God it will merely dismiss. This is the final judgment, the case against you. The final judgment is my son is innocent and he simply had a dream that no longer exists. There can be no case against the child of God and every witness to to guilt in God's creation is bearing false witness to God himself, capital H. Appeal everything you believe gladly to God's own higher court, Holy Spirit, because it speaks for him, capital H, and therefore speaks truly because only truth is true. It will dismiss the case against you however, however carefully your ego has built it up. The case may be foolproof, but it is not God-proof. A little play on words there because we are the fool, our ego, body, mind. The Holy Spirit will not hear it because capital H, he can only witness truly the truth. He can only see truth, love and light of God. His verdict will always be thine, thine is the kingdom. 
because he was given you to remind you of what you are and you are God's kingdom. When I said I, I am come as the light of the world, into the world, I meant I came to share the light with you, not to be your deity, not to be worshipped, not to be your God, demigod, guru, something to be adored and, and praised. No, treat me like a brother. And follow in my footsteps means act like I do. Remember as I do. My father and I are one. My father resides in me as he resides in you. What I can do, you can do, and greater things than I have done, you shall do. If you only have the faith of must see something somewhere in the Bible. Remember my reference to the ego's dark loss, the mirrors of illusion in the world of separation. And remember that also said, do not look there. Look, yeah, in the temple. It is still true that where you look to find yourself is up to you, either in the world of illusions, of objectification, body, minds, people, places, things, events, or internally in the silent I am. Your patient, this is beautiful about patience in time, because we associate patience with time. Your patience with your brother is your patience with yourself. So those of you that are struggling with patience, it's trying to teach you to love yourself knowingly here now. It's not a child of God. You were with patience. God has waited for you, for you to let go and dissolve your dream. I have shown you infinite patience because my will is that of our father from whom I learned of infinite patience. His voice was in me as it is in you, your Holy Spirit, speaking for patience towards the sonship in the name of its creator. Don't be so quick to judge. Give people time. Don't go and force them. They will come when they're ready. If you be that, be as you are, they will come. If you build the kingdom and extend it within yourself, if you build it, they will come. Field of dreams with no more dreaming, the final dream of awakening. You must learn that only infinite patience produces immediate effects. It sounds paradoxical, but let's read this again, and let's really understand this incredible line in the course. Now, here now, always now, you must learn, undo the ideas, and understand in your being only infinite patience Forever now, here now, produces immediate effects. Why? If it's always here now, it's immediately here now. So the minute you're patient, vigilant, be still and know I am, the effect's immediate. The love, the joy extends, and you know it as an extension of yourself. This is the way in which time is exchanged for eternity. Infinite patience calls upon infinite love, and by producing results now, it renders time unnecessary. So it's that be yourself knowingly. Be patient with self and others. Reside here now. Forget about time. Still the mind, still the thoughts, out of time, into eternity here now. Love is the result, the experience of love. We have repeatedly said, this is a sonship talking to us, that time is a learning device to be abolished when it is no longer useful. The Holy Spirit, the memory for God, who speaks for God in time, also knows that time is meaningless. And that's why God spoke into the dream and couldn't enter the dream, because it's not true. Because if God entered the dream, it would be real, and we'd be buggered, be stuck here. So God gives his voice that go between the interpreter of God to his son and his son to God. He reminds you of this in every passing moment of time. So they pass because it's not true. Because it is his capital H special function to return you to eternity here now and remain to bless your creations there. Here now. Now is the time. Love your creations. He is only blessing. He is the only blessing you can truly give because he, capital H, is truly blessed. Because he, capital H, was given to you freely by God. And you must give him as you receive him, capital H. Capital H. Okay, so as we're doing right now, we're sharing. We're sharing. We're giving the love of God to the self. And we're extending it, abolishing the darkness, abolishing the fear. 
forgetting about space-time as a continuum and returning to here now. Amen. Now we do the final um, section in chapter five, uh, section eight, five point eight, the decision for God. Um, this is chapter five, very final part of it, healing and wholeness. So keep this in mind. It's all about healing and wholeness, which is one and the same thing. The decision for God. So the fact that you picked up this course, the fact that we, as humans, once upon a time, believing we were bodies, became spiritual and let go of the dogma religion, maybe. And we, we started to find another way because religion wasn't giving us the answer. Why? Because religion is taught dualistically. If religion was, if all religious texts, Quran, the Bible, the Torah, if all of them were taught from non-dual perspective, non-dual mind, the truth is in everyone. That's why mystical Christians like Master Eck, um, Eckhart, not Eckhart Tolle, Meister Eckhart, 12, 1200, 1260, I think it was, was a, a Christian mystic that transcended non-dualism and started to understand the I amness and, and taught it. Of course, they wanted to persecute him. They never got it right, but they wanted to. So it's a decision. You choose for God as God has no need to choose you because you're an extension of him. But God doesn't choose you. God doesn't choose a nation. It's all God. All of it, the sun is God, is part of it. Okay, so do you really believe? This is this is he's like, he's like teasing us a little bit. He said, Do you really believe you can make a voice that can drown out gods? You think you can't hear God's voice? Let's practice hearing God's voice. Here we go. Just 10 seconds. Here's God's voice. Isn't it beautiful? God's voice is so silent that it's deafening. God's voice is silent. God's name, silent. God's essence, silent. And when you abide in it, no judgment. The extend the acceptance of all as is, realizing it's all you. That acceptance of all transcends into what we call sensing, feeling, and the knowing of love itself. Do you really believe that you can devise a thought system, a tiny mad idea that can separate you from him, capital H? Do you really believe you can plan for your safety and joy better than he can? You need neither, you need, you need be neither careful nor careless. You nearly need merely cast your cares upon him, for he careth for you. You are his care because he loves you. Capital H. Capital H. His voice reminds you always that all hope is yours. Because of his care, trust in me, says God. Trust in me, says the voice for God in you. You cannot choose to escape his care because that is not his will. And you will to will his will. But you can choose to accept his care and use the infinite power of his care for all those he created by it. Love your creations, meaning extending God's love to all of yourself and your entire dream. When you love your entire dream, you love yourself. To love yourself isn't a selfie picture and put a picture there going, self-love, look at me, I love me, look, I love my body. You don't love the body. You love the essential nature, the essence, which is you, the real you, that essence, which only becomes all-pervading in your awareness when you are Totally still and silent, no thought. If I say now, and then I'm going to pause now, 
and there's nothing between the pores. In, those, in that pause is the real you, is your essential you. So let's try this. Close your eyes for a second. I say the word now. Now. That silence is you. That silence is your essential nature. That silence is your capital S. Holy Son of God, self. The self is silent. No thoughts, no projection, no observation. And as you abide in that stillness and silent, that silent stillness, abide. Abiding in the heart, the stillness, the heart, the temple. Abide in God. You rest in peace. While awake, not asleep, rest in peace, be still, and know I am. I am that I am. Be this knowingly, and realize that that has been with you since you can remember. It was with you as a child, as a teenager, in your 20s, in your 30s, and so forth. It's always the very essence of your essential nature through which your love filters through as what we call passion, pass I on. Through our natural talent, our creativity, pour that into the world. Once you have the recognition of the self, and that only really comes and stays once there's nothing more to forgive. The guilt, sin, fear idea of the past are gone. You're not bringing it into the present. You're not projecting into the future. So in the present, be here now, totally silent. And you share, pour all of you into it. And what is received, what you share grows within you. You're not actually receiving anything. It's growing in you and you're becoming prevalent. You're becoming aware of being the awareness itself, of being that joy, joy silent self, son of God, self, the joyous, holy spirit which is you you are god's son and therefore you are his voice you are his kingdom you you all of you the very essence of you contains the memory of god what is the memory of god holy spirit you are that which is the holy spirit of god you don't have an ego you just believed you did you let go you have no ego but you have you are the holy spirit He's holy kingdom himself in you. Not God. The sonship is you. You are that in which God resides. God resides in your heart. God resides in the kingdom. Omnipresent, oneness. Your heart is the kingdom. And your heart is the center, the awake part of your mind. And the rest of it doesn't count, doesn't exist. The asleep part of your mind isn't true. So the real you, God's Holy Spirit, the infinite here now. Love eternal. There have been many healers. This is addressing us and saying, careful now as you step into the world that you show this face and be authentic. Don't try and be spiritual using holy spiritual words. And we now have to bless everyone all the time and call each other holy brother. And hey, guys, just Lou is fine. Lou G is fine. Just it's, let, let's not try and be evangelistic doesn't need another evangelist we share this because sharing makes us real i don't share this for you there is no you i share this because that which i am needs to recognize it and by sharing it i am more of this divine essence divine knowing myself as god's only son whether one person watches, whether no one watches. Of course, you aid me in, in I look forward to sharing. And it's always strange talking to yourself, but we are in essence talking to ourselves. You are I and I are one. We are the same. I appear to be talking to others, but I'm only talking to myself. And so this is for us, the, the unhealed healers. There have been many healers who did not heal themselves. So. 
They have not moved mountains by their faith because their faith was not whole. Some of them have healed the sick at times because those sick were meant to be healed. The Holy Spirit was playing a role there anyway, whether they were healed or not. But they have not raised the dead. Now, let's stay here for a second. The raising of the dead is not bringing a physical body to life, but bringing a sleeping mind to awake. That's the raising of the dead, the awakening. Unless the healer heals himself first and foremost, he cannot believe that there's no order of difficulty in miracles. And that's why so many healers revert to magic. Now, the only magic that still has of any value in this world of illusion is the magic called forgiveness. This forgiveness is an illusion, but it's the one magic tool that abolishes all magic. So it's the one most acceptable to the Holy Spirit because when you fully have forgiven, you realize you needed that in order to understand self, to bring yourself into self-awareness. And once you can forgive with gratitude because forgiveness has to be hand in hand with gratitude. I forgive you for those trespasses, but I realize I'm so grateful if I hadn't experienced this, I wouldn't have searched another way. So I'm so grateful for the things that hurt me. I'm so grateful for the people that hurt me and were abusive and terrible. And maybe I fought back and made myself feel worse. I'm so grateful that I acted horribly and that they acted horribly in defenses and defenses in the battlefield. And now I realize it was all me. I was creating this. So I'm grateful to what appeared to be my menemies, my enemies, my many me's. I'm so grateful because I now realize I am. Thank you. Okay. He has not learned that every mind God created is equal, equally worthy of being healed because God created it whole. So the sonship is one mind. One son fell asleep, split himself into billions of minds. These are the minds that we're talking about now. And therefore, as it's fractured, the Holy Spirit, the memory of God remains in every fractured being, every thought in form, equally. Each one of us contains the memory of God, and it's complete in all of us, waiting for us to complete our remembrance that we are the Son, equally. No one's special. Yes, some can orate better, and some can remember better, and some are famous. Equally in all of us. No one is holier. There's no holier spot on this earth than any other. The holiest place on earth is where an ancient hatred, an ancient judgment, became a place of love where in you as the Holy Son, your temple, the self, the Holy Son, the Holy Spirit, Son of God, self, you. You are merely asked to return to God, the mind, as he created it, capital H. He asks you only for what he gave. He gave you, you, capital H, knowing that this, that this giving will heal you. So offer it. God gave it to you, and you offer it back equally. Sanity is wholeness, and sanity of your brothers is yours, for they are fractured parts of yourself you haven't yet recognized because you haven't forgiven yourself for dreaming a dream of separation where fear, guilt, and sin became the foundation of your belief system. Give it to the Holy Spirit. Love becomes your new foundation, and love is experienced in this body, mind, sense, feeling, sensations, thoughts as Peace, joy. Peace, joy is the love of God as you, in you, through which you love all of yourself. One. Although it appears like eight billion. Why should you listen to the endless insane calls you think are made upon you when you know, when you can know the voice for God is in you? So, um, Teresa said earlier, it seems like this is talking to me. Of course it is. Patty says, it appears like it's appearing to me right now. Of course it is. It's in you. It's perfect timing because you are not in time anymore. You are timeless eternity here now. And so as you release the bondage you placed on, in, on yourself through the attachment to those crazy, tiny, mad ideas of sin, guilt, and fear in yourself, as you release it, your truth, the light in you awakens, and it appears temporarily while we're in body, mind, space, time, as words on a page or traveling through Luisha's voice as it talks to you internally because it is one voice in all of us. God commended his spirit to you. Commended. 
poured it into you, commended it to you. And that's a capital S, Spirit. And asks that you commend yours to him, capital H. He wills you to keep it in perfect peace because you are of one mind and spirit with him. One mind, capital M and capital spirit in the blue book. Excluding yourself from the atonement, the at one month son of God, is the ego's last ditch defense of its own existence. So it circles back on you. You've created a defense in order to prevent an attack, and then it makes you feel guilty for that. Drop your defenses, rise above the battlefield. Don't engage. Don't look for sides. Who was right and wrong? You realize this. You forgive self. You forgive them. I am one. Love your creation. It reflects both the ego's need to separate and your willingness to side with its separateness, divided by body mind. This willingness means that you do not want to be healed, and yet you do. So transcend this by forgive self, forgive others, and realize that as you forgive, so you are forgiven by whom? By your own self-judgment. You let it go. So you being forgiven, it's not God forgiving you. God has no blame against you. It's your own self-judgment that you release as you forgive. So you are forgiven by whom? by your judgmental mind, dissolves and nothing to forgive. But the time is now. Because the time is always now. Now is the only time that actually exists. You have not been asked to work out the plan of salvation yourself. Because as I told you, the remedy cannot be of your making because you've made the illusion. Okay, God himself, capital H, gave you the perfect correction for everything you made that is not in accord to his holy will. I'm making this his plan perfect, explicit to, explicit to you, and will also tell you of your part in it and how you how urgent it is to fulfill it. Okay, now he's teasing us a little bit here, so don't buy into it literally. Okay, so he's going to now share with you how. And more importantly, this little sentence, God weeps at the sacrifice. God doesn't really weep, but he's trying, because we're still in slightly dual mind as we had stage five of A Course in Miracles, it's trying to call you to let go of this idea that God can believe he's, God knows you as his son. He just knows you're dreaming. And, and just like a parent wouldn't want his son or his child to suffer a nightmare, God doesn't want you to suffer a nightmare. So he wants you to return to the full remembrance of yourself as his, the extension of his love. Okay, so God weeps at the sacrifice of his children who believe, who they believe that they lost him, but he cannot be captured. So remember this whenever you act, and if you're not acting and if you're responding and you create your defenses, and trust me on this one, no one's been built bigger walls than I did because my nickname's Batman. So, I, you know, even, even my alter ego had a big defense system okay whenever you are not wholly joyous and what i mean by that is you can be and i can be and if i can be and i now am if this batman can so can you whenever you are not wholly joyous it is because you have you have reacted with a lack of love to one of god's creations your sonship your brotherhood perceiving this as a sin you become defensive now because you expect to be attacked again. See how the ego circled back? Create the defense and now it's going to attack you, make you feel guilty. So you build a wall, you got attacked, you attack back, they attack. And so in the battlefield now, above the battlefield, no one's to blame, forgive, love your creations. The decision to react in this way, and this is typical to everyone in this world, so don't think you're special and you're the only one going through this, okay? is yours and can therefore be undone because it's created by your ego. It can be undone. It cannot be undone by repentance in the usual sense because this implies guilt. So think of religion. It's all about repent, 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 repent. In other words, mia culpa, mia culpa, I'm guilty. Okay, so I'm guilty. You're not guilty. You cannot be. You're just dreaming you are. If you allow yourself to feel guilty, so you allow yourself because you're not guilty, you will reinforce the error rather than allow it to be undone for you. So don't reinforce the error. You are not guilty. No matter what you do when you dream at night, 
don't wake up and the police is there to arrest you. You killed a couple of puppies in your dream. You don't find the SPCA there in the morning with a baseball bat about to beat you up for your dream. Not real. In the same way, this entire space-time universal illusion of body minds in this planet and the universe isn't real. What's real is you're dreaming. And that's not real too. What's happening is just think you're awaken to the self, be the love and light of God. Decision cannot be difficult. It's ask you, choose again, and recognize your dreaming, or at least allow yourself to recognize your dreaming. You've tried every other way. You've even tried beating yourself up or the blood of Jesus or sacrifice and, and a vow of silence and all the crazy things religious people do. Try another way now. You've tried every other way. You've tried accumulating. You've tried detach. Tried owning, controlling. You've tried let go. Tried being not attached and hiding from the world. Let's try another way. This decision can't be difficult. Let's try another way. Give it to the Holy Spirit. Can't take it away from me because there's nothing to take away from me. Show me another way to see this. Take away these filters. Show me another way to see them and I'll remove them. Shadow work, filters. Suppressed ego, guilt, fear, sin, filters. Show me another way to see that, and it will dissolve in the light of my newfound awareness. The I am returns. This is obvious if you realize that you must have already decided not to be wholly joyous if that's how you feel. So if you're feeling guilty, choose again. Don't go and beat yourself up for having chosen incorrectly. Therefore, the first step is in the undoing is to recognize that you actively decided wrongly, but can as actively decided decide otherwise. So, Teresa, if you're listening, this is important. Just this is your recognition. I want you to acknowledge how far you've come, how far you're growing, because you've, you've recognized it. Okay. And now there's another way to see this. Be very firm with yourself, your body, mind, self. And keep yourself fully aware in the undoing process. Fully aware. Stay conscious. Keep your lanterns burning because the thief comes in through the back door in the middle of the night, which does not come from you. So realize the light is in you, but not from you because it's the Holy Spirit reminding you of what you are. And it is nevertheless within you because God placed it there. And what God placed, you cannot destroy. Your part is merely to return your thinking to the point at which the error was made. At which point was the error made? When you decided to fall asleep and choose wrong-mindedness. You listen to the voice of the ego, which isn't true. And that's when, and that's when it died. That's just when your, the whole delusion happened. We now choose. So we're now back as the decision maker. Choose Holy Spirit. Show me another way to see this. When the thought comes, show me another way. When the attack thought comes, the sensations, feelings come, show me another way to experience this. Don't engage. Don't get into the dialogue with the thought. Don't engage because you'll get into a war with yourself. It's always with yourself. And then you'll go into the, what appears to be the real world, which is the illusion. And, and the confrontations come. Why? The world is an outer reflection of an inner condition. So if you're beating yourself up, people are going to beat you up. Find those thoughts where you beat yourself up. I'm unworthy. I'm not good enough. I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not capable. Beat yourself up over and over now. Not good enough. Not worthy. Blah, 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 blah. The world attacks you. And then you go, you see, the world are bunch of assholes. And then you feel guilty because you've done it because you're supposed to be spiritual or a course and miracles person. You're not supposed to be upset. Yes, you're not supposed to be upset. But don't start saying you're not supposed to be upset if that makes you feel further guilty. Recognize. Recognize. Okay, I chose wrong. Holy Spirit, show me another way to see this. And give it over to the atonement, at one, the joining, the memory of God in peace. Say this to yourself as sincerely as you can, remembering that the Holy Spirit, the memory for God, will respond fully to your slightest invitation. Hence you here. It's responded. It's brought you here. You're now sharing this with me. I must have decided wrongly because I am not at peace. I made the decision myself, but I can also decide otherwise. I want to decide otherwise because I want to be at peace. I do not feel guilty because the Holy Spirit will undo all the consequences of my wrong decisions 
if I will let him. It's a willingness to see it anew. If you reinforce, you must be right. Find blame. I'm wrong. She's right. She's wrong. I'm right. Step out. Neither of you wrong or right. Don't engage. There's no right wrong above the battlefield. Show me another way to see this. This happened for me so that I could find finally a way to go step above the battlefield, which means reserve no judgment. No judgment. Look, recognize the Son of God is free, perfect in what appeared to be his imperfection, as I recognize that which is imperfect isn't true. That which is perfect I cannot yet see, but I'm willing to be shown. Show me another way to see this. If I choose to let him by allowing him to decide for God for me, so I choose to let the Holy Spirit become the memory of God in me, the blessed memory of the Holy Son of God I am. I fell asleep. I dreamt up this universe. I fractured myself into nine septillion beings, eight billion on this planet, reincarnating over and over and over again. The secret dream of fear, guilt, and sin projected into the physical appearance of this universe, appearing to die and return. If you believe in reincarnation or just live once and die. And if you're good, you went to heaven. If you're bad, you go to hell. If you're spiritual, you keep reincarnating. If you're really happy, you go to heaven. There'll be seven virgins. Can't do, you know, don't know what to do with one woman. Now you're going to have seven. How are you going to appease them? You're going to go straight back to hell. <laughs> so, you know, let all of that nonsense go. Religion played a role because it got you searching. And then it played a role because it didn't answer the questions you had. And then you gave it up. So it played a role again. And then you went searching. And then you found angel cards and tarot and astronomy and astrology and Reiki and Kabbalah and Oponopono, good one. And uh, distant dealing and astro traveling and all of it just made you feel special and but you were still miserable. And one day you said a very spiritual thing, fuck it. There has to be a better way. It has to be a better way. I can't, surely can't be. If God is love, how could this, how could he have created this mess? Great question. And you'll hear the voice say, I didn't create this mess. You did. What do you mean I did? Talking to yourself, Luz. Of course you're. It's only the self. Ooh. They're going to put you in a mental institution. White padded jacket. White padded cell. Zips up in the back. Feed you porridge for the rest of your life. Well, there has to be a better way. And you push on. Don't give up. Talk to yourself. Talk to God. And be quiet. No point in talking. You can't hear when you talk. You can't hear when you speak. Ask. Be silent. Be here now. Be as you are. And allow the voice to filter through silently in your stillness. And you shall know. Be still and know. I am. A holy son of God. I lift that up. Be blessed. I hope this helps. Listen to it as often as you need to. And um, just remember that the answers are within you. This is the voice for God talking from within you as your Holy Spirit. It comes in the form of a book, but it's just illusion. It's all you. Return to that. And remember, you are the love of God. You are the kingdom. Thank you for listening. Thank you for sharing. And I trust that the Holy Spirit in you, which is the Holy Spirit in me, is the I am in all of us, will remind us that this too shall pass. And we will once again awaken in the glory of the love, joy, and peace, which is God. We are the kingdom. And we are remembering. Amen.